So moonshot thinking. I'd like everyone to take a moment and think about what moonshot thinking means to them and try to distill that down into a single word. So take that moment and think about moonshot thinking. And now that you've had that moment, I'd like to see who's going to be the first one to jump in and share that word that came up for them. A revolution. Anyone else? Rockets. Launch. I heard Rockets. some. Rockets. Cures. 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 Seamless. Seamless. Potential. Anything from back there? Audacity. Audacity. Great. Does anyone know what this picture is from? Polio. So those are iron lungs that are breathing for polio patients from the 1950s. And ultimately, the solution to polio was not to build more iron lungs, but to develop the polio vaccine. And I would call that a successful medical moonshot. And I'm very happy to be able to contribute moonshot thinking to the stone soup of this conference because I believe that as physicians, we're uniquely positioned to understand what the challenges are at the front lines of healthcare and identify and even execute on delivering on our own medical moonshots. And I've had the opportunity uh, to work on a medical moonshot, which is to develop a crowdsourcing competition to end Alzheimer's. And I also serve as a Singularity University faculty member, which is a learning community dedicated to using exponential technology to solve the world's greatest problems and create a better future for all. And so if we're going to talk about moonshot thinking, I'd like to start with the definition, which is moonshot thinking is using exponential technology and 10x thinking to solve grand challenges. Now I have to admit there's a fair number of buzzwords on that slide. So in this presentation, I'm going to do an introduction to exponential technology and offer some ABCs to 10x thinking, all in the service of helping you solve the grand challenge that you are passionate about. And so let's start off with an intro to exponential technology. Now for the last 250,000 years, Human development has been linear and local. I mean, on the plains of the Serengeti in Africa, information traveled effectively at the pace that someone could walk or run. And yet over the last hundred years, development has become global and exponential. Information now travels around the world at the speed of light. And to understand why that linear to exponential transition is important, I'll start with a very simple example. If I were to take 30 linear steps, one, two, three, I might get by 30 to the other side of this room. But if I were to take 30 exponential paces, and by that I mean one, two, four, eight, 16 meters, where I'm doubling the distance that I'm traveling with each step, after 30 step exponential paces, I would have traveled a billion meters, or 26 times around the Earth. Now some of you may recognize Gordon Moore, uh, Intel scientist in the 1960s who famously predicted that the density of transistors on integrated circuits would double approximately once every two years. And his prediction has, been com has come to be known as Moore's Law and has largely held true for the last 50 years. And so in very tangible terms, this is what that looks like. In 1958, when the first integrated circuit was invented, there were two transistors on it, and those are kind of fundamental computational units, we'll say. 1971, Intel came out and offered 2,300 transistors to the world. And then in 2017, NVIDIA put out uh, the, one of their NVIDIA GPUs with 21 billion transistors. And we've seen, uh, and, and in terms of what this looks like in even more practical terms, if we compare NASA's uh, Apollo lunar uh, module computer, uh, to the Apple iWatch, uh, we see that it was 7,000 times more expensive than an Apple Watch, and yet the Apple Watch is 120 million times faster. And we've seen the same price performance exponential curve in data storage, from 5 megabytes for $120,000 in 1956, all the way to dollars, or, or less than a dollar for a gigabyte in 2018. 
And what I want you to take away from this intro to exponential technologies is that once a technology becomes information enabled, once it becomes digitized, it will also jump on to that exponential curve. And so that can include 3D, 3D printing, AI, robotics, synthetic biology, genomics, the list goes on. And so as you are thinking about an important problem and thinking about what, pro what, solution, what technology you can use to solve it, if it is information enabled, then it will likely have changed in terms of its performance since the last few years that you read about it, and it, it will probably continue on that exponential trend so that it may uh, intersect with the problem that you're interested in with just a few years, and it might be time to start working on it. So that's an intro to exponential thinking. Let's talk about 10x thinking. Now, Astro Teller has famously defined 10x thinking by saying that a 10x improvement is easier than a 10% improvement. Now, he says that because if you are challenged to come up with a 10x improvement to something, you have to throw out the legacy systems. You have to throw out conventional wisdom, and you have to start reaching for novel solutions. And sometimes, in so doing, you can find a 10x improvement. But truly embracing 10x thinking and identifying 10x improvements can be quite challenging. And so I want to offer you some ABCs of 10x thinking, kind of practical tips you can use to try to embody that kind of 10x approach. So for starters, A is for and yes conversations. And what I mean by that is when someone on your team comes up with an idea, try to find something within that idea that you can build on and say, and yes, and do so, build on it, contribute something else. And the reason that's important is that creates synergy within the group and broadens the horizon of the potential solutions that you're looking at. Bad idea brainstorming. This is an activity where you challenge yourself, challenge, challenge yourself or your team uh, to develop ideas to solve problems, even though you know at first blush those ideas won't work. They're too crazy. But in those ideas, there may be the kernel of a 10x breakthrough. So I give as an example this concept of using balloon-powered balloons to offer internet to everyone in, in, around the world in rural settings. And that what first appeared to be admittedly a seemingly bad idea ultimately became quite a success at X through their project Loon and is now um, actively in use at several sites around the world. C is for convergence of exponential technology. Look for opportunities to solve problems where two exponential technologies are coming together. This is work from my PhD thesis where I developed the Pico Lantern, which is a miniature projector um, for minimally invasive, which is a projector for minimally invasive surgery. And what we did is by incorporating the combination of exponential improvement in projector technology and computational technology, we were able to develop an augmented reality system which shows surgeons information about the underlying blood vessels and anatomy. Uh, and tumors to guide their dissection and reduce patient complications. And because it was this novel combination of the two things, we were able to patent, license, and develop the technology further. Finally, if you're working on, on, on grand challenges, it's good to find something that you would die for and then live for it, because it's going to take a lot of hard work and persever perseverance to deliver on those 10x solutions. Know that experts will tell you what can't be done. And I, I, I share this with you with some hesitancy because I recognize there's lots of experts in this room. Uh, but I'll say that, the, and, and there is a need for expertise in certain contexts, I, uh, but uh, when it comes to 10x thinking, uh, it can be that experts will say, we've tried that before, we've tried something similar, this is why it won't work. And, and so treat that kind of expert advice with appropriate respect, uh, 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 but also understand that sometimes experts do make predictions that aren't correct. Uh, Einstein in 1932 famously said that he didn't expect nuclear energy would be obtain obtainable in the near future. Admittedly, he changed his tune by 1939, uh, but there was a time when him, he as an expert didn't think it was possible. Failure is okay. This is something that my mentor, Dean Kamen, really subscribes to. He has over 500 patents to his name. He's the inventor of the Segway, many medical devices, but also 500 failures. And he only takes on projects at this point that he knows uh, are not necessarily going to be successful. I was going to say you failed to stay in the time limit. All right. Good. So I will wrap up in 10 seconds. We've got our, our uh, ABCs 
we've got the recap of what moonshot thinking is. These are some of the people who have moonshots here. I think we're surrounded by moonshot thinkers at this conference. I was going to mention what they are, but due to time constraints, I'll have to power on and say that I hope that this has given you some tools to have success in working on the moonshots that many of us are all working on and to be part of solving the grand challenges of healthcare. Thank you very much. Thanks, Philip. Appreciate it.